Welcome to Faculty Insight, brought to you by Harvard Extension School in partnership with ThoughtCast. I'm Jenny Atia, and I'm speaking with Henry Leitner, the Associate Dean for Information Technology and Chief Technology Officer at Harvard's Division of Continuing Education and a Senior Lecturer on Computer Science at Harvard. Henry, you also oversee the distance education initiatives here at Harvard Extension School. And in fact, we're in a control room where many of these courses are recorded. Online education's become a pretty hot topic these days. Why so? Well, I think uh, the general public has become more comfortable with online technologies and with taking courses online. Uh, when we first started experimentally doing courses in this fashion more than 12 years ago, uh, we restricted them to computer science courses, to courses where uh, the individual students were comfortable with technology and were willing to uh, debug really the uh, software and the hardware, which back then was a bit finicky. But as you know, over the last few years, uh, internet bandwidth has gotten more widespread, uh, hardware and software has gotten more reliable, and students are online a lot. Interestingly, Harvard Extension School has a history of using technology to educate people. Yes, part of the Extension School's mission has been traditionally, and the Extension School's been around for a bit more than 100 years, to experiment and innovate uh, with teaching technologies that enhance the learning for adults. And if you look at demographics, you'll find that uh, maybe 16% of all individuals who are currently in higher education today or what you would describe as a traditional 18 to 22 year old at an undergraduate college, which means the vast majority of the people who are enrolled in higher education, and this is true obviously at Extension, are adult learners of all types. Well, in addition to your distance learning oversight activities, you're also a teacher here. In fact, you're teaching a course called Great Ideas in Computer Science. Yes. <laughs> and you also direct the Master of Liberal Arts and Information Technology program at the Extension School. And I believe you recently had a chance to Skype with one of the candidates for this degree, a young Swiss fellow from Zurich. That's right. Yes. All right, I'm here with Gabriel Haze, a candidate for the ALM in IT at the Harvard Extension School. And Gabriel, I believe you've already completed uh, six courses and you're enrolling in a seventh course this semester. And I was going to ask you a question about the online experience in general. I mean, you're watching the classes after they've happened, I imagine, rather than in real time. And how did you feel about learning in that format? Yeah, it's, uh, it's actually, it, it took a while to, to get used to it, to the idea that uh, you watch the course not while, it happen, uh, while it's happening but you can still be a part of it. Nowadays, in a lot of courses, I, I send email or, or um, forum posts before class, and, and particularly for, for points that I want to have discussed in class. And, and then the professor takes it up, and this gives you a, a much more uh, feeling of, of being a part of it. Right. I, I'm really excited to be a part of this, because uh, actually I, I don't think it's much of a question if education is going to be online in the future. But it's more of a question how. Yeah. I think that it's a really great thing that Harvard and the Harvard Extension School is, is looking into this and, and is, is trying to, to find ways and... and um... yeah, because it's also, it's also a bit of a philosophical question, whom should Harvard be educating? Traditionally, it was for students who were within commuting distance of the campus, but increasingly now, suddenly education is reaching parts of the world that previously had no access to it. Thank you very much. Bye. Bye. Well, thank you to Gabriel from Zurich. Henry, if the overall mission of the distance learning initiative is to spread education as widely as possible, how is that goal being achieved? Well, uh, quite rapidly we have expanded from what was really just a small handful of computer science courses uh, some 12 or 13 years ago to the point today when we have about 200 of the 620 or 30 courses available online, with an online option, I should say. It's also interesting to note that of the 217 students in the class I'm currently teaching, only about 50 or 60 of them are truly geographically distant from the Harvard campus. And yet, uh, our adult audiences have become so comfortable with learning online that 
The last time I taught on Monday, the weather was fine. People could have been there. Only 40 of the students actually showed up in person. Everybody else was watching it either live online or after the fact on demand. It could be said that something has been lost in that regard, but something has also been gained. Many of these courses are available online for free. That's right. And, you know, if you watch what's going on in the news over the last year, there has been also tremendous growth by organizations such as Coursera and edX, which is a initiative that was jointly started by Harvard and MIT to offer courses for free online. Our Open Learning Initiative is an example of that, what is sometimes called a MOOC, a massively open online course. But how can Harvard or MIT, for that matter, give away its prized assets for free? Well, it's an interesting question. So, I mean, on the one hand, you could have the worry that it will hurt enrollments at Harvard Extension School, that offering a course in the open format where anybody can watch and learn on their own uh, would somehow lower the enrollments for the courses when they're taking place on campus. But we've actually seen that's not happen. What's happening, I think, is that students who are really interested in accreditation, in getting evaluated by real human teaching fellows and having an affiliation or an association with a faculty member are still going to enroll in the bricks and mortar version or in the online corresponding version that the Extension School offers. Because with the, uh, the MOOC phenomenon, when you've got 100,000 students, you're largely restricted to grading and assessing students in automated ways that don't allow educated and highly trained individuals such as the teaching assistants with whom you would confide normally when you're stuck uh, problem solving or doing other kinds of homework assignments. I want to know that red ink is from somebody I respect. Yes, that's a good way to put it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, there, there are experiments going on with peer assessment where you submit work and then three or four of your fellow students will do the assessing, perhaps using rubrics. But that has not yet panned out because you get some very odd evaluations of your work when you submit them to sort of this randomly selected audience. Distance learning, online learning is a move towards democratizing education. Absolutely. But it doesn't necessarily have to <laughs> democratize evaluation. That's correct. And part of the democratization, you know, if you read some of the popularized accounts of what's going on is to see that in parts of the world, for example, where women are traditionally not allowed outside the home, they are now having access for the first time to high level uh, education, either through, you know, Harvard's initiatives or through others uh, that they would not have had just a few years ago. There are a lot of heartwarming stories that are coming forth. In fact, Drew Faust, the president of Harvard, spoke about a trip that she took last year to India where among the questions she was asked is how can Harvard do more to help educate their large masses of people? And it turns out that one of the open courses that's being offered today, in addition to the computer science course, is a course from the School of Public Health. And there are some 9,000 individuals in India who are enrolled in it, many of them medical professionals, and 150 of them are actually getting together in real life to discuss the coursework so, you know, it's these sorts of heartwarming stories that make it, you know, completely relevant to Harvard's mission to continue pushing the frontiers in online education. So this is the positive spin on globalization. Right. This is the positive spin on technology. And, and you're able to make that argument. Yeah, and I think if, you know, that's really what Anant Argawal, the guy who started edX, has been saying that yeah. this, is, this is the game changer. This is what really yeah. is going to yeah. democratize education in a way that has been absolutely impossible before. Yeah. Henry Leitner, thank you very, very much for your time. You're very welcome. Thank you. You've been watching Faculty Insight, brought to you by Harvard Extension School in partnership with Thoughtcast. I'm Jenny Atia. Thanks for joining us.